Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today's video is going to be about discus, water changes, problems, hopefully solutions. Uh, but a bit of an apology up front. I had already shot most of this and I've lost a load of footage due to an SD card dying on me. So it'll be more of a recap of what I've been doing for the last week or so. But let's start off with a bit of background. Regular viewers will know I love my discus fish. So I have three tanks of discus fish at the moment. I often make lots of bold claims about, no, they're not that sensitive. No, they're, they're stronger than people give them credit for. Because they do have a bit of a reputation for being quite intolerant fish in terms of poor water quality or changes to the environment. I think they're a bit tougher than that and think they deserve more credit than they get. But very recently I put them through something which I think any fish would struggle with. So we're in my fish room. The discus tanks are here, here and here. Uh, and in the garage, there's a, a toilet above us in the, in the main house and a soil pipe that runs all the way along the top of the roof space um, out into the drains. And it turned out that that got blocked and backed up and full of things you would find in a toilet waste pipe. Um, regular viewers to the channel or to my Friday night live streams will know this situation as Poonami. Um, long story short, because it's quite harrowing to rehash all this, uh, I came in, just as I went to have a look at it, there's a, an exploration cap thing there, maintenance cap, that exploded off, covered me, and this side of the fish tanks in the stuff that was in that pipe. As you can imagine, that was quite horrific. So quickly ensued a lot of me, well, swearing first and foremost, but a lot of me trying to get these fish out of these tanks into other tanks. Um, which I did fairly quickly, but you know, there was basically shit in all the tanks. Got myself cleaned up, got all the tanks cleaned up, and then started to refill the tanks and get them all back in again. But the discus specifically, now there are angels and things on this tank, but the discus tank took the brunt of this. Um, which is why I think they're the only ones that have actually got sick from this. So they went downhill fast. Um, obviously, some kind of bacterial infection. And I made a video about that, how I was trying to address this and I made the comment, oh, I don't really know what medication you use for shit in your fish tanks. Because um, that was the problem. So what I embarked on was a series of large water changes. And I did that quite regularly and I got on top of it and all the fish cleared up. They had a bit of a relapse. I'm not sure whether we just didn't quite clear it up again or I got a little bit behind with my water change routine. Um, so I wanted to talk you through that and I had started making a video showing you how bad the fish were looking to see if we could turn it around with water changes and it was going to be a kind of make it or break it thing where I either achieved that or I started looking at what additional medications we had to use because the initial video that I made about this was oh I can't believe you're not doing anything about this you should be dozing Metro, you should be dozing uh, Escher 2000, you should be dozing Escher Hexameter, you should be dozing and it was like medication after medication after medication all conflicting reports of what I should be doing and I wasn't doing any of them I was just doing water changes so I wanted to show you the power of water changes I'm not sure whether this is fortunately or unfortunately but we've now missed most of the really graphic horribleness of these fish because uh, they're starting to get better they've mostly recovered um, but there's one fish that's still struggling a little bit so if you can extrapolate off that as to what they were all like um, it'll give you an idea of the kind of problems we're facing but let's take a look at the fish so here's all the discus and at first glance you might not notice anything but if you look at this fish here in particular if you zoom in on him you'll see a lot of his slime coat is coming off he's quite dark his tail's a bit ropey he's got a little bit of a pinched forehead he's the one that's been struggling but he looked a lot worse than that he was almost black and um, his tail was all ripped and the fins were all ripped uh, he was really emaciated i mean he's still very thin but he was really emaciated but now he's at least feeding and he had all his slime coat was pretty much gone but most of the fish in this tank looked exactly like this fish is now or worse and as you can see most of the fish in this tank are absolutely fine now and the only treatment that they've had is large water changes. And when I talk about large water changes, I mean large water changes, and often too. And this is the power of clean water. If you give your fish a chance, that can often be all that's required. 
And when I talk about large water changes, I mean large water changes. I'm in the middle of doing water change on this tank now. And as you can see, that's way more than 50%, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about size of the fish, 90%, 100% sometimes they're called. But that in and of itself can present you with some challenges and some problems if not done correctly. This is still a large water change in most people's eyes. And this is a perfectly good way to start into it if you're a little bit nervous. If you're going over 50%, that will do a lot to change the water chemistry in the tank if that's what you're trying to do. Quite often, if you're doing large water changes to address a problem, if the fish is sick, you don't want to change too much because that's just putting extra pressure on top of your fish. And if it can't, if its immune system is weakened to the point where it's like, oh my God, you've dropped the temperature 10 degrees, oh, well, that's it, I'm out, <laughs> dead. Or if there's a pH swing, or if there's any, any of the other parameters that you're not sure about, you need to know what's going to happen to the water when you change it. But assuming you know all that, so in my case, it's fairly well established that the water quality in this fish room, it all comes through from a single source. I change a lot of water anyway, so I know that a lot of water changes doesn't change the, um, the water chemistry too much. I run through an HMA filter, so I'm not adding any additives. I run through a shower valve, so I know the temperature is going to be able to match that that's going in there. It's just very important that you make sure you're keeping things as level as possible because you don't want to shock your fish by treating it. Um, and that's the reason I prefer to do water changes over medicating my fish, if it's at all feasible, is because often the medication, the cure can be worse than the disease. Um, if you're treating a whole tank and it's only one fish that's sick, clean, clean water isn't going to upset a load of other fish. But if you're treating a whole tank and it's only one fish sick with medication, the other fish are getting medicated at the same time. And medication takes its toll on the, the fish's inner workings, if you like. So water change, that's what we're doing. That's what I hope to prove in my last video that would actually make a difference. Uh, and it seems to have done. Um, but what I don't want you to take away from this is, ah, Aquarium Ventures guy says, all medication is useless. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that we can get so far with water changes before we consider medication. But what you really need to do is know where to draw that line. You don't want to spend a week doing massive water changes on a problem that's never going to be fixed by water changes and then you've missed the window of being able to help your fish because you didn't medicate early enough. And I can't tell you where that line is. You have to figure that out for yourself. I'm not even very good at drawing that line. That's why this video that I've now lost most of the footage was a risk because I didn't know whether or not it was going to work. I didn't know if I'd already missed the line I should have already medicated. So it was constant experimentation, constant learning. That's what this hobby is all about. So if you want to try large water changes, there are a few practical things you need to consider. Obviously, the way that I would suggest you do it is work it into your normal routine. Um, if you normally do 20% twice a week, something like that, bump up to 40%, then 60%. And while the fish are still okay, you can observe the behavior, see if any problems, any changes in water chemistry, all that kind of thing. Does your pH go up, down, all that kind of stuff. The practical things are like, make sure you get the equipment out of the tank. If you've got heaters in your tank and you drop the water level away down to there, when you fill it back up, your heater will explode. Make sure you've got a means of controlling the temperature. Don't just drop out 30 degree water and pump back in 20 degree water because that will make your fish explode. Obviously not literally. You might want to consider like a water butt or barrels or something to get your water in so as it's ready, you can bring up the temperature there. If you don't have a shower valve or if you don't have an HMA filter, you can do all your water treatments first, get your water ready, and then fill it back up. Because if the way I do it now, it will take a good 20 minutes, half an hour, if not longer, to fill that back up again. If you're not happy about your fish living in that sort of water volume for that length of time, get it prepared in advance. It's all about tweaking it and finding a system that works for you. Obviously, not everyone has a fish room that's like this, and if they do, they still might not agree with the ideas that I'm putting forward. So work out your own way of doing it, but there's no denying that a big water change can be the answer to a lot of small problems. And if I have to be completely honest, the reason that I really like doing large water changes to address problems is because I'm not very good at diagnosing illnesses and diseases. I'm not very good at knowing off the top of my head what the best treatment for something is. So you're then out into the wilds of the internet saying, all right, how do I treat this? 15 different answers come back to you and you're still none the wiser. So I'd be interested to know what would what treatments would you consider using 
if you faced your own Poonami and you had this, what would you be thinking of dosing? Because in the last video I had every comment under the sun was completely different. I'd be interested to see if we can find some kind of consensus out there as to what kind of treatments for treating this particular bacterial issue. Um, because I have to be, I'm not an expert, I don't know these things. Um, I, I struggle as much as anyone else does trying to figure out medications. Um, but luckily, this time it seems to have worked. So I hope you weren't watching this while you were trying to have your dinner and now you've got the image of Poonami in your head. And if you do, I apologise profusely. If you want to not talk about this more, but talk about any other fishy ideas, join me on a Friday night, 9pm UK time, we normally do a live stream. And come over, join us, have a chat, hang out, uh, talk about all things fishy and whatever else is going on in the world as well sometimes. If you have found this useful, and like I say, if we've talked about the medication earlier, let me know in the comments what you would be doing. What kind of things would you be thinking of? What other ideas that I haven't mentioned would you think is important? Maybe we'll make an update video on this type of thing. Um, but as always, if there's a clicky thing, go click it. If there's a subscribe button, go subscribe. If there's, I don't know, anything down below, click. Go and click it. Thank you for watching. Bye.